Welcome to the video. So I want to show you the new updated version of the color palette editor tool that I've built to work with Cubase. A week ago I uploaded a video on this just to show you guys the early stages and let you play around with it so I could get some feedback. And the feedback's been pretty awesome so thank you for taking the time to use it. Let's take a look at the updated version. So when you open up the browser um, you will get a pop-up menu just to tell you what you need to do roughly. When we get to the final version, I'll do a tutorial video that will pop up here. And if you want to hide this, then you can go to Don't Show again and then get started. By default, none of the tools will work until you first of all import your default XML file. Now, I'm going to open this up. I've got a folder that I've pinned in the file browser just so I can quickly get to the location. Pull my Cubase XML file and you'll see here this is the current color palette that I use on all of my projects. Now to show you the improvements and changes to the tool first of all I'm just going to remove all these. So we'll treat this like we're building an entirely new palette. The main meat and potatoes of this tool is the gradient generator. This is a really simple and quick way to generate swatches and gradients. How this works is when you choose a start color, the end color for your gradient will be automatically calculated and you can control the brightness of that end point using the end slider. So if I want the end color of the gradient to be more towards white or brighter, then we have that control here. I like to leave this as around, well, set to 75%, which is the default. And um, if you want to also experiment with things like saturation for those colors, you can use this slider to make the gradient more pastelized. Now, one of the requests was to add a manual mode so you could manually choose your own end point. And you can now do that. So up here, click on this little icon to disable the auto mode. And then you choose your end point and where you want this to live and when you update the start color like so it will also update the color for the end point but remain in that anchored position so you can generate your own kind of you know whatever you want to do now the steps tool allows us to generate four colors at a time so let's just go for something a little bit different here like this or you can go for eight colors at a time. We now have an improved version of the harmonize button, which I'll show you at the end. And the other tool here, which is a new tool, is the color picker or eyedrop tool. This is really useful for quickly pulling colors from different things like a family photo, or maybe you've got a swatch of colors that you like and you want to convert into a palette to use in Cubase. You can click on this tool and you'll be able to click anywhere on your screen to pull a color and it will add it in straight away. You can also use this tool using the short key, which is E, that lets you do the same thing over and over, quick and easy. So you'll be able to build palettes, you know, much quicker. In the center where all the swatches are, the usual functions are there, like dragging and dropping individual swatches, deleting individual swatches. But now, if you hold Shift, you can move entire rows and swap them around or you can delete entire rows as well just by clicking on any of the swatches in a row. Over to the right we've got this new menu and I've moved the import and export function so import obviously to load your defaults XML you build your color palettes and then once you're happy you click on export and it will generate a new defaults XML which is the one that you use to replace uh, the one in the current Cubase directory. Below this, we now have some presets. These are built in. So if you want to use my color palette, then you can just click on apply and it will automatically add those colors in ready for you to export your new defaults XML. And it won't change any of your metadata because what's happening is when you uh, import a file, the only bit of code that's actually being updated is the color code for palettes. And then when you generate any new code, it's basically replacing that, okay, and not touching anything else. So when you apply one of my presets, it's just pulling in that little snippet of code and replacing it in your file that you've got imported here. 
Now next to this, or should I say below, we also have a colour preset that's been kindly shared by Jason Graves, who's an award-winning composer, really awesome guy, can't sing him enough praises, and if you want to use his colour scheme, just click apply, and there you go. So thank you, Jason, for sharing this. And I've added some links down here. If you're not familiar with the name, you've probably heard Jason's music across Dead Space, the trilogy of it, Far Cry, Moss. There's just there's so many things he's worked on, and just a really cool dude. So if you want to go to his website, check on check on <laughs> brain work. Click on um, this button here, take you directly to his own composer website. If you want to check out his new venture with Soul Catter Sound that are offering composer courses, free sample libraries as well. I want to show you guys some of the free libraries. They're amazing. I'll do it in a different video. Click on this little icon here. And if you want to go watch some of Jason's YouTube videos or listen to his music he's uploaded, head over to his channel, subscribe, like, check him out. Thank you, Jason. Here at the bottom, below these two built-in presets, we now have the ability to save a color palette as a preset. So once you've created a palette you're happy with and you want to save that, it'll take the hex codes and it'll place them into a JSON file. So you go on here, give it a name, save it to wherever you want. And then later on, if you ever feel like you want to change over your palette from to a different one that you've built before, you go to load, go to wherever you've stored your JSON file and then open it up and it will automatically update your palette again. So you can then export and replace your default XML. Now, finally, I want to show you the improvements I've made to the balance or the harmonize button. It's been a bit of a bugger, to be honest, to work out a way to do this, but I think I've got it down. It might still need some tweaking, but I think it's nearly there. So how this works is once you've built your color palette, it'll you'll click on this and it will look at every single color regardless of its position and take into consideration hue, saturation, lightness and all these different factors and it'll create a sort of overview of your palette and then it will figure out what colors it needs to subtly change or you know groups of colors it needs to change to balance things out to harmonize the palette so their relationships are all more uh, harmonized. Before, it kind of used to cook the palette so it, it wouldn't look like your original one, but now it keeps it more like the original. So to give you a quick example, let's just click on this harmonize button and you can see how these hex codes are updating. Now, it'll also give you an output number or a score telling you how well harmonized the palette is. So for Jason's in this case, after using it, it's now 99% harmonized. So let's use my color palette and try this out on here. And you can see straight away, it's made these less saturated and balanced them with the other colors. So before, after. Now, I don't think there's much more for me to show you. Um, if you want to make a donation to help support my work, whether it's making tutorials on Cubase, working on these tools like the custom color palette tool and also door body. I haven't forgot about it. I am working on it still. It's just a lot for me to get my head around with all the different things I'm trying to do with it, but I am still working on that. If you want to make a donation though to support me, click this button up here and just buy us a coffee or a beer, mead preferably, <laughs> or some sandwiches just to keep me fueled up. But in any case, thank you to everyone that's tried out the earlier version of the tool and provided me some feedback. Let me know if anything needs changing or not working. See you all in the next video.